All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is 6.30 p.m. Eastern, standard time, in the great mountain state of West Virginia. We are here in the broom closet of Lost Legion Games and Comics. That can only mean one thing. Yeah, it's F-N-M. It is F-N-M. Friday Night Magic from Lost Legion Games and Comics in beautiful downtown South Charleston, West Virginia. My name, as always, is Zachary Evans. I'm joined tonight by... I think the same same crew that was in here last week, wasn't well, that it? That would be an accurate statement. Sir. Sam, Hannah, Hello. and Jordan Petio. Yep. How are you fellas doing this evening? It's, it, it is standard Well, time. guys, I'll tell you how I'm doing tonight. Uh, I'm living the dream. Mm -hmm. uh, for the last 21 weeks, I've done this silly little broadcast from this broom closet via wireless. But tonight... Tonight. Tonight I'm rock hard. Due to, uh, due to as it, for those of you who follow on our Facebook page, are, are more than aware... Through a very diligent uh, hour and a half I spent on Wednesday not playing Commander or Cubing and instead pulling <laughs> wire through the uh, tile, the drop ceiling tile of this store. We now have a hardwired internet connection. My connection speed is stable and as high as it's ever been. Oh my so, god. So, uh, for those of you who watched last week, we did have a lot of issues with connectivity. The stream was very choppy. Uh, even the YouTube videos after the fact were very choppy. Watch Hopefully, this. knock on wood, we will have that. Uh, sorted out this week for you. Let's talk some business. Like I said, we are here at Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston, West Virginia, playing Friday Night Magic. This is a standard tournament, as it always is, and it looks like we have 31 runners tonight. So we broke broke back over the 30 uh, participant it. mark. Um, this is the last week some of these guys will be here. Uh, in fact, both of the gentlemen in the feature match, we'll talk about them later, they were they are part of the uh, five, the four or five or six guys that are going back to college. So, <laughs> uh, so we will lose serious. those. We will lose those numbers. But hopefully, we can get back to some uh, near 50s like we were uh, before Christmas. So we appreciate, of course, everyone who's uh, both our diligent fans that have watched for the last five months, and for anyone who's new tonight. Uh, thanks for checking us out. These guys will be uh, ready to fire off here shortly. Let's talk about the participants on the left. Is a Mr. Nick Reed. Nick has played on camera multiple times before. Last week, he was playing a uh, Bant control deck. This week, uh, he is playing. I have no idea. Uh, I ask him. I ask him. Uh, I'm familiar with the decks that Nick owns, and I ask him if he was playing any of the three that I knew he owned, and he said no. Then I asked him if he was playing something fun, and he said no. And then I walk. And then I walked away because I got tired of playing 20 questions. So we will. Uh, that that will be a surprise for me, just as it is for you. On the right, Casey Skibby. Uh, and he is playing Burn at the Stake combo. <laughs> uh, so here's what happened. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had uh, the first installment of Max Turner Needs a Deck, in which you, our faithful stream viewers, uh, get to vote on what deck local fa fan favorite Max Turner plays at FNM. You chose Burn at the Stake. He played it to a top eight finish in, a, in multiple highlights of the night. Mm -hmm. uh, it was hilarious, and it was very fun to watch. Uh, and then, uh, subsequent to that, three separate people at the shop built that deck. So uh, that is the effect that that had on it. Uh, tonight, we are actually running the second installment of Max Turner Needs a Deck. He is out there battling with the deck that you voted for, Stuffy Doll. So he will be playing Red Green Stuffy Doll. We'll have him under the feature match camera in round two. He's not as excited about this deck as he was the Burnt Steak deck. He says it's not nearly as fun, mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to be a lot harder to be fun. It's going to be hard to be more fun than Burn at the Steak combo. You set the standard awful high. Yeah. 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 So I uh, apologize. We got a little bit of uh, downtime here. And Nick's uh, <laughs> shuffling pretty hard here. He might have had his deck uh, uh, piled out, or he might have just put it together. So thoroughly shuffling up. You might be asking yourself, Zach, what are those three oddly sleeved uh, magic cards in the middle of the play area? I know I want to. That's a very good question, and that, of course, as we will see them flip over, is our, our house playset of rock, paper, scissors cards from Unglued, Rock Lobster, Paper Tiger, and Scissors Lizard. That's how we start all of our feature matches. If you'd like to win your own playset, we give them away every week, so stay tuned to round two where we will give you information on that and also draw for last week's winners also remember this week our last uh, last week we said we we're giving away a playset of dead bridge goliath scissors lizard wins nick reed should be going first i think casey explaining to nick that scissors beats paper <laughs> But sometimes it's hard, like you don't see it. The, like, the like, Rock Lobster and the Scissors Lizard, at first glance, appear to be the same card. Paper Tiger Paper Tiger can spot from a million miles away. Mm, yeah, that's a tiger. Yeah. So I'm looking at what Nick's playing. 
Uh, I'm going to suggest that it's green and white humans, but I am not going to uh, commit to that. As we see, Casey resolve a mulligan. So yeah, we've got 31 runners tonight. That means a five-round standard tournament, followed by a cut to top eight. If things are uh, like they they usually are, that means a quarterfinal round and then a chop at the top four. Mm -hmm. But we will wait and see, and we'll be bringing you coverage of all of that goodness throughout its duration. Got a lot of fun stuff planned tonight. Quite. Uh, actually, I don't know if we have a lot planned. We just have a lot of one thing planned, which of course is talking about spoilers, because there were uh, about a what I would what I would call a metric crap ton of spoilers released this week. Yeah, and they were really interesting spoilers. Uh, and they yeah. just keep eking out too. Interesting. Any okay? Uh, you know how the the debate about power creep and how Wizards R and D refuses to admit that there's power creep. Uh, you <laughs> cannot look at any of the cards we're about to spoil tonight, or at least the top five of them, and deny <laughs> power creep, uh, including one very uh, significant X spell, uh, which I still am baffled as a magic card. We'll talk about that. <laughs> we'll talk about that after the match, uh, as we have time. And here we go with the first round. It looks like it is, in fact, green-white humans from Nick, uh, as uh, or green-white aggro, I should say. So, starts off with the turn one champion of the parish. Always good. Followed by a mountain. Like, I wasn't looking, and all I heard was, like, Champion followed by Mountain, and I was like, that doesn't sound like it's possible. <laughs> yeah, that was two different decks. That's the reason that happened. So there's a Krinko's Command. Of course, if you're not familiar with the Burn at the Stake deck, I will do my best to explain to you quickly what Casey Skivy is going to try and do. He is going to play is it cards. He is going to play uh, Krinko's Commands uh, and uh, Goblin Electromancers, and he is going to attempt to combo off with Battle Hymns, Past in Flames, uh, various looting cards, and to try and power up a massive burn at the stake. <laughs> Max Turner did it two weeks ago to great effect. Was uh, did Max or is Casey using Epic Experiment? Uh, I uh, Max was using two copies, I believe. Uh, I I saw while he was shuffling. Casey is also running Epic Experiment, so we'll see uh, exactly what he's doing. This okay. looks like Silverblade? Uh, Silverblade Paladin, so this game That's might be over. Very good. This is not a good matchup for Casey by any means. Well, I mean, there is a chance he can go off this turn, right? Like, I can go off uh, it's, turn three? It's very difficult for him to go off without an Electromancer. But, uh, it, subsequent, uh, short of a Rancor, uh, uh, Nick can't beat him this turn. Oh, well, well, so here, here he's going a... for it. So, three mana floating. Three mana floating. Battle him. Battle him. Going to go up to four mana floating. Yep. Not the best battle him. It's the best thing <laughs> Not the best battle him. The battle him is incredibly powerful. All these cards are incredibly powerful uh, when Goblin Electromancer is out. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. actually the card. Uh, yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. I think Casey is uh, stalled here. I think he may have made a math mistake. Oh, no, he's going to go up to five. Five. That's burn at the stake. And then he's going to reforge the soul. Uh, How much is he floating right now? And none. Zero. None? He consumed all of it. For the, well, because for the those reforge. those those, uh, those battle hymns were effectively just uh, like pyretic and, or desperate rituals. And see, here's the and thing. And Casey's pretty desperate right now, if you know what I'm saying. Well, uh, here's that's the the, okay. Here's the problem I would say that just happened. That's a bad pun. Okay. That's that's one. That's oh, one okay. bad pun. One bad pun. You get, to, th you get to three, you get banned from the Broom of Thought. <laughs> well, basically, he just refiled the aggro deck's hand. Yes. With, which means Rancor. Like I'm, I'm just assuming that means Rancor. Uh, well, Rancor wins him the game. Anything short of that is, I mean, Casey's not going to win this game. The the cards that he has to have in his hand are pretty uh, pretty specific. Smear? Champion? Thalia. Yeah, Thalia. He's yeah. not going to be able to beat Thalia yeah, either. Thalia. <laughs> so he should be able to survive uh, with chumps, but, um... Yeah. But he's not going to be able to come in. The, the, the deck can't really function without... without a significant number of tokens. So what, is, what does the deck have to deal with creature-based decks like this? Uh, hope and a prayer. Yep. Uh, I actually don't know in the sideboard. Um, is it Staticaster? Uh, it's played in some sideboards. Okay. The problem with that being uh, that 
while it has, while it's a perfect answer to Thalia and the mana guys, and oftentimes the uh, gather the townsfolk tokens, uh, it doesn't necessarily answer a champion uh, because by the time it comes down, it's not. Uh, it's probably a three three. Yeah. Yes. Day. So Nick Reed and his green white aggro deck take game one, which uh, is to be expected. Uh, he's got a pretty significant favor. He's pretty significantly favored in this match, especially uh, on the play and with a turn one champion. Quite. The number of uh, games that the humans deck, uh, I guess it is humans, I should say. Um, the the percentage of, of games that the humans deck wins when it goes turn one champion on the play, it's got to be like 70%, I would imagine. Yeah, something like that. I mean, he's just a powerhouse. And then into a, into a silver blade that bonds with a, a champion yeah, is that's, ridiculous. That is not to overuse uh, magic jargon, but uh, that was as close as you can get to the nut draw. <laughs> I mean, it really is. Like, the, the only thing that would have been better than that uh, is possibly you could argue Thalia on two, simply because Thalia is more... Uh, beneficial against the it would, token deck, it but... It would have stopped him from reforging the soul, theoretically. Yeah. Of the course, he reforged the soul and just basically Wheel of Fortune. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing. I don't think you would want to reforge until you can, like, have the he, excess of mana. No, I mean, uh, Skibby didn't want to do any of what he did, no. but he also knew that he he was not going to have the tokens, so yeah. he just he just ran it out. Uh, he had to die. He was going to die if he didn't mm -hmm. block. Yeah, if he had been able to float, if he had a, a Electromancer on the board, um... The deck runs cover spot. I did not know that. Uh, it might run one or two copies. It's kind of an alternate win condition, because there are some games where you might not be... It only plays two burn at the stake, because you never want to draw two of them. Oh, no. Um, but it does, uh, Gutter Snipe does serve as kind of a de facto plan B, because when your combo turn, you cast a lot of instants and sorceries, so you can, can potentially see, chain like, them together. Yeah, like going into hymns, into hymns, into passing flames, and just yeah, casting like hemming, hemming and Yeah, and like all of it's being shocked, like taped on any of those, and it's like just for doing what you were doing anyway, so yeah, I can understand it. Hadn't, hadn't seen it before, though, like ever. Which which um, card was that again? Gutter Snipe. Look, I've oh, never seen it yeah. in the deck. Yeah, I was talking this week, uh, for those of you who uh, are dedicated fans, of several months ago, right right after Return of Ravnica came out, Stephen Bumgardner played uh, Is It Gutter Snipe deck on our uh, feature match uh, that week, and uh, people were very excited about that. That actually was one of the highlights of the week that week, because he, uh, he ended up winning a game, uh, uh, he miracled a uh, Thunderous Wrath, and then it was countered. Then he is the charm countered back, trigger gutter snipe for exact damage. Um, and it was, uh, but he, he was supposed to be here tonight. I don't know if he, I don't. I didn't see him out there. He might have not been able to make it. But um, so yeah, I mean that gutter snipe in and of itself is is very fragile. But against decks that can't remove it, if you if you if you're fast enough, you know you can really get some work out of it. It makes all of your. It's especially good in the burn deck. Yeah. Because it makes all of your. I mean, like you said. Uh, that's why cards with Battalion are so good. You're going to attack with your dudes anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to you're going to hit something with Pillar anyway, so you might as yeah. well get a shock out of it. So, did you guys see what either of these guys brought in? I don't know if Casey sideboarded. He put this deck together just, like, kind of, like, at the last minute because he just wanted yeah. to play the fun one. Um, so he might not have a sideboard built. Uh, as, I, as I realize now that my, my splash screen still says, starting shortly. <laughs> But yeah, these I, is I did a, not see what Nick put in because he did the typical like face down. Yeah. So are you advocating that players for our benefit sideboard face up? <laughs> yes. They should show both. They should both. I mean, this is a public service that we do for these guys. We turn them into pseudo internet celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> We're the kingmakers back here. <laughs> Over five dozen people are currently watching right now. So, I mean, that's seventy-two more people at Skibby. Would have, like would never have known about him or Nick Reed. That's that's 72 more people than would have known before now that Skibby was a surname. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember the first time I met uh, Skibby, asking him what his name was, and he said Skibby, and I said what? <laughs> oh, I thought he I said Skitty, the Pokemon. Well, I did not realize that he was uh, going by his uh, his surname. So looks like we're both keeping seven here. Uh, Casey is on the play. That's going to be a lot better. And no turn one play from Nick. That's probably the best thing of all this. 
So we see Faithless Looting. That's actually, uh, in my opinion, the most important cards in the deck are Faithless Looting and Goblin Electromancer. I, I would agree. Uh, without the looting to kind of fix your draws, it's very tough. Oh, wow. Garrett Meadows? Did you already win? We can alternate. So, th uh, so we have an interesting interaction where Casey goes turn two Electromancer, uh, and then uh, Nick answers with turn two Thalia, which basically just negates each other. Uh, however, the, <laughs> however, the Fiend Hunter uh, is going to make things a little bit more difficult. Uh, I see a Past in Flames in Casey's hand. This deck does use the Graveyard. So a mayor? Dendy bigger humans, especially with Thalia. Yeah, I mean this is a good draw, but like there's there's no rancors, there's been no well, well speak of the devil, you know. Yeah. And paid for appropriately. So that fiend hunter is four, the Thalia is three, right? Mm -hmm. So that's down to eleven. The was like non existent. Okay. Go tell him he needs to pay one more. Oh, no he doesn't. No he doesn't. <laughs> I thought he needed to pay more for the goblins, uh, but I forgot that he replayed a goblin electromancer. So, uh, what looked like a pretty good start for Casey is kind of kind of whittled away here. If you, yeah, Thalia is the is well. There's a lot of cards that are bad for this deck, mainly counter spells. But the uh, Thalia is, is really. I think the Thalia wouldn't have been so bad, except the Fiend Hunter came down. Like, if you had double Electromancer, I think he'd just be able to go through his whole deck. Like, sure. do whatever he wants. Like, Fateless Looking for one on a flashback. Yeah. Double yeah. Electromancer... Double Electromancer without a Thalia is pretty... It's pretty hard to lose if you untap with four lands in that situation. I have, uh... I have solitaired this deck on Cockatrice a lot. Mm. <laughs> and I'm familiar with the interactions. It is very strong, but it needs... It needs better part of four lands. Yeah. And the Electromancer makes it a lot, uh, lot, uh, easier. Because your Battle Hymns all net you more mana, uh, your Thatcher's Revolts don't cost nearly as much, mm -hmm. your Krinko's Commands all cost one. I mean, I know these are, like, obvious things I'm telling you, but at the same time, like, it's... It's what the Ducks were really built around. Yeah. There's a face of saluting off the top. So he can Battle him here and nets him one mana. He really needs a... A Static Caster wouldn't even be good here. Static Caster, yeah, that would be alright. Yeah, so he's gonna dig for business. Finds a Thatcher's Revolt and another Faithless Looting. I feel bad for Casey too because, like, uh... He needs to, uh... His, his lifetime record on camera is... <laughs> is very low. Like, he's an excellent player. He's top 8 at all the events he's played in since he came back from. Uh, from states other than one, or from school other than one, but every time we put him under the camera, it's just, mm -hmm. it's like Cliff Markham, too. Yeah, like, like <laughs> I think Cliff has won once on camera, and that was like the first time he ever played on camera. And that's, uh... I lose Cliff constantly. Of course, I play bad decks. <laughs> well, <laughs> so it's unfortunate that we didn't get, really get to see the power of, uh, or... I, I call it power. I don't know if it's necessarily raw power, but uh, the Burn of the Stake deck can do some pretty degenerate things, but not in the face of an extremely fast clock and not in the face of a Thalia backed up by Fiend Hunter. So that's round one. Uh, we still have a half hour left to go. One of you gentlemen want to go see if you can sweet talk. Last week, Jordan, you were very good at sweet talking people in. Do you want to look at the list? So let's see if you can... Jordan can step outside, see if we can find another like feature. Max Turner for like his own. Brian, uh, the, his opponent won't play on camera. So, while Jordan steps outside, see if we can find you another match here in round one. Let's take this time as we always do every week and thank the fine folks here at Lost Legion Games and Comics for letting us broadcast their F and M to you. I don't think it. Uh, I don't think I can say enough about how generous uh, it is for the folks here to, number one, let me pull a hundred foot of Ethernet cable through their ceiling <laughs> during business hours uh, to let me uh, eat up their bandwidth. JB, has, uh, the manager, has to print me out an extra pairing sheet every round, and uh, we've, we've had to move to uh, numbered tables and posted pairings and stuff like that, so uh, they've been more than... Uh, willing to accommodate us, so we definitely appreciate that, and anyone who is uh, 
regional or local, we'd appreciate if you uh, enjoy the stream, if you'd kind of pass that back on to the shop as well. Lost Legion has four locations, Parkersburg, Princeton, Beckley, and here in South Charleston, all in West Virginia. Uh, convenient to two and a half to three and a half hour drive from places like Blacksburg, Roanoke, Pittsburgh, Morgantown, Columbus, Cincinnati, and Lexington. Go to their website, lostlegiongames.com, for an, a calendar of events. They don't have online sales currently, but uh, make sure you uh, favorite their site. Check out the calendar. Anytime we have a Grand Prix trial or event like that, uh, it is a convenient distance. We uh, do this Friday night webcast every Friday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, here in the good old U.S. of A. Twitch.tv slash Magic is the website. If you're watching now, that's obvious to you, but if you're watching after the fact on YouTube, come and try to check us out live sometime. As I always say, if you can't make your FNM, come watch ours. You know, we've got a lot of stuff going on here while we, uh, while we wait for Jordan to find, try and find another match. Uh, a lot of stuff going on tonight. We've got, uh, you know, at the, at the tail end of last week's uh, broadcast, one of our faithful viewers Tindra uh, sent us what has now become the most uh, most <laughs> adorable picture ever. <laughs> well, she made some new graphics for the stream that I have uh, subsequently plastered all over the internet. Uh, all, all of my avatars. That's the so we'll on be my phone. we'll be. Uh, <laughs> I hope to God it's not. Uh, otherwise, we have some serious issues there. But uh, but we'll we'll check that out. Like I said, we'll also check out the uh, new round of spoilers. A lot of saucy ones. Quite. I got Joe Lewis and Mike Miller. Joe Lewis. Alright, Joe Lewis and whoever Joe Lewis is playing. Yes. All right. Joe Lewis and not Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis and... It's Mike Miller, because I think he signed up after it started, after he had made the pairing. Okay. So is my pairing old? I think so. Or is it not Ernie? He's not playing Ernie, he's playing Mike Miller? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's playing Mike. All right. Do you know what game this is? Um, okay. Uh, I heard that much. Things are happening. Well, thank you, Jordan, for being the pairings fairy. I could have literally, literally used another derogatory wor this word, but last week I did swear on the uh, stream, and I'm trying to not do that we again. Need to back it up. Well, I asked the <laughs> six people. All yeah. of them had already finished, because apparently everyone's running aggro decks tonight. Well, so it's going to be a quick one, so there's going to be plenty of time to talk about spoilers. Is that Kulianko here? No, no, I have not seen him. Well, I'm going to have to uh, berate him. Or not. Uh, he told me he's going to be here tonight, so hopefully he shows up at some point. So, uh, round two, round one. Bonus match. On your left, that's Mike Miller. As we have learned just now, he's up a game. Uh, do you have any idea what he's playing? No. I can go out there and see. Uh, don't care that much. We will figure it out eventually. His We're opponent... judging from his play, Matt, it's probably... He's, black? He's, <laughs> do you live in a world where people's deck choices is uh, tied directly to the play math that they are, have? Are you trying to tell me you don't? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Joe uh, and Mike's opponent is uh, stream regular Joe Lewis. Joe has the distinction of last week being our round one feature match uh, and also the second person in the history of the shop to drop before ever playing a game of Magic. <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, Dave Brown did it once as a joke. Joe did it last week because of some, uh, I think, some last-minute... Uh, Much in your some, family. Well, I think, yeah, it was some unplanned things going on. But uh, he, he, has, he has ensured me tonight that he's actually playing. Okay. It's not a joke. He's not trying to troll me uh, by his participation. Uh, what's Joe playing tonight? Do you know? Um, I do not. Uh, I don't... Well, since we didn't see him play last week, I have no even basis of we'll see. I think he's playing, like, green-white something. I feel like he's playing Beats, which Joe has told me before he really doesn't like that day. Michael usually, uh, Mike usually plays some kind of control variant. Um, well, I see a charge in his hand. He might be doing Omni Dwarf Magfire. Because let's just, let's just assume that everybody plays Omni Dwarf Magfire. Well, he was playing a Door to Nothing, like a four-color Door to Nothingness deck a few weeks ago. That was not the Travis Wu deck. It was just his own take on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, so it would not surprise me if he is playing uh, playing something like that. <laughs> I apologize for the glare. Um, uh, so like, Joe's desperately playing Jund. Looks like he's playing Jund. Looks like Jund. Oh, there's a lot of glare on that. On that. 
Well, I definitely apologize for that, guys. I'll try to fix that in between rounds. But uh, in, in weeks prior, people have told me that they can't see the cards well enough. I think a lot of those people are people on YouTube who just don't know what the cards are. And I think they're blaming it on the inability to, uh, to, uh, What's to see. So uh, I have moved the camera down closer to the table. But the problem with that is that uh, it takes a little while to dial in the... Uh, the super high-tech glare disposal equipment that we have out there, which is two box tops propped up by comic book uh, backer boards. Oh. It's very high-tech here. So Mike's taking the pain. Mike's shocking himself. Four drop means uh, Planeswalker. Is it a Jace? No, the other one. Old Garrick Relentless. Not to be confused with Garrett Relentless. Our own Garrett Meadows. We do see a wolf token. So Joe's clearly playing Jones. The Blood Hole, ironically enough, has actually killed me a lot of times. Yeah, I don't... I have no problem with the, uh... Main the, uh, oh, no, no, this is game two. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, woo! Uh, I, I, was about, I was about to say, wow, this guy, he has confidence. <laughs> so I'm going to assume that Mike is playing a five-color control variant. So so Slaughter Games comes out, naming, we'll see what he... Uh, Jace. Jace. Uh, so I got a funny... Five color huh? Single to that. I only see one Jace no, I just saw the Terminus, and there's no Terminus. Oh, okay. And another girl. Sorry. Uh, well, there's just a chance that he just only has uh, one or two Jaces. You don't really need like a whole. I don't really want a whole grip of them necessarily. It's yeah. not like Mind Sculptor. Or I do remember like when, they, when he was first like starting to see playing standard. Everyone was like, "Oh, you're playing blue. Play four Jace. You're playing, you're playing control. Play four Jace." Well, yeah. he's a four drop planeswalker with Jace in the name, so I can see. <laughs> why people would rush to that. And I think there's probably a metagame in which he was... Or like, right around States, everybody was playing, like, humans and zombies, and Jace plus one was a very good play. Yeah, but, quite. Uh, the metagame has shifted to a lot slower... Uh, slower pace, and I think people are opting away from him for for bigger, better fatties. So Joe all Slaughter Games on Jace Architect of Thought. Funny story about the Slaughter Games. This week I've been getting, I wouldn't say railed, but uh, getting a little bit of uh, hate from uh, commenters because I, uh, last week, said that Slaughter Games was debatable. And then, and then in the game where Troy King resolved two of them, he ended up winning. Uh -huh. So, of course, if you win a game, then every play you made was absolutely correct. Right? <laughs> of course, of course. How many works? And my point, as we see a duress, an old Urza's uh, Saga, the original Ooh. duress, Ben's a Dreadbore. Another Farseek. Uh, my comment on uh, memory side effects in general, not just Slaughter Games, it's not that they're bad, it's just that there are some decks where... You, if, I mean, in that perfect situation where you get exactly what what the cards in their hand is going to break the hand, thing, yeah. then it's perfect. But uh, a lot of times you have to side out a very proactive card for a very reactive card. Yes. So my point was being that I like one copy in Jund. I don't know about multiples. And there were multiple points in that game. If you don't remember that game, it went on forever. Yeah. And then Troy like eventually won with like Lingering Souls tokens. Mm -hmm. But had that Slaughter Games been like, oh, I don't know, anything that dealt damage, yeah. probably would have been in a better spot. White. But the point I'm trying to make is that the internet disagrees with me, and I should shut up, according to the internet. <laughs> the internet uh, very knowledgeable Nothing place. is ever wrong on the internet. Or everything is wrong. <laughs> so Joe uh, misses a land drop, passes back with no action. Okay. trying to remember what was in his hand. I know he has an, he has an abrupt decay. decay. Which keep that I think he actually... It keeps that Garrett from flipping. He's going to choose not to use it here. Do you know Joe plays Bonfires? Um, I don't think I've ever seen him play. Well, he was playing Miracles a while back, so it makes sense if you had had Bonfires in there. Not sure. The, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. The chat's already exploding with their own, uh, spoiler discussion. Uh, yeah, all, all very, uh, very interesting points about, you know, two, there's like about three cards that are spoiled this week that are uh, just... Like, they'll have epic effects on the metagame. Quite. And I can say that word epic without, 
You know how I hate. Be... You know how I hate hyperbole. Yeah. No, <laughs> but, this uh, is that's well, there's, kind of... a, there's a card I'm interested to talk about with everybody because like I haven't seen anyone talking about it at all. Well, we'll see if I have it. Uh, have it. I downloaded all the spoiler images, so that we'll see. Uh, there's some that I missed, so we'll see if I have them. So Joe comes down with a Rakdos key rune, so he presents at least a blocker for one of these and a subsequent attacker into Garrick. And we're gonna play for a bunch of wolves. Mm -hmm. Mike, of course. Mike shows no uh, no fear. Now second main phase though, if he really want, well no that would kill Garud now I think about it because key rune's a three one. Well, I, was saying, I think he it has is a, a dread boar. If he has a dread boar, he can just kill it. More than Which, anything, it is a 3 1 first strike. He did. He fought it. <laughs> surprising. He, he might have another Garrick in his hand. Oh, yeah. I gotta do something with his glare. I guess it's not too bad. I mean, I can tell what's lands, what's on it. Yeah, but. At least he doesn't play with his lands in the front. Am I right? Uh, <laughs> This discussion. <laughs> well, well, Yin Sang is in the house tonight. Uh, he known for the one line vertical of lands. What? <laughs> Surgical extraction. And if I remember correctly, uh, Mike saw that when he duressed, didn't he? Yeah. So. He might. He might just. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I still. I still like the position Mike is in here. If he plays things in Revelation. Yeah, Which, of course, he has to. Am I right? Joe has a wolf run out and a blood hall. Let's see if he remembers to activate the blood hall. Four mana, five mana, Tamiyo? No, it's just a door. Uh, does he? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He has enough lands to manually do it. The question To activate the door, the question is, does he have the right mana? And the question is, does Joe have anything in his deck that can deal with it? Because Abrupt Decay will not hit it. You're right. I wonder if you brought an Ancient Grudge. Mm. Or if he has them, I guess. Or maybe he cited... Acidic Slime? That would work, too. Did oh. they play... Does he the, has Acidic Slime. I'm pretty does, sure he had it in his hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah there it is. Slime it. Yeah, he saw that on the dress, didn't he? <laughs> oh, yes. of course. He did. Well, maybe he's trying to bait him. Maybe he's got it over his hand. The way you, yeah, you can next level somebody and just be like, oh... <laughs> he may have he may have just forgotten. That is uh, something that happens. Well, I do like the synergy now that he can just kind of like uh, terminus. I was gonna say he could wolf run with that slime, and it's very good because yeah. it's just like one get, get me some action going through to your yeah. face. And like you said, assuming Mike is playing Sphinx's Revelation, which for all intents intents and purposes, he surely should have it in the deck, right? Quite, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're going eight all mana, the way for four color, then you might as well it costs eight. Rakdos oh, Rakdos Rakdos for a lot. Is Mike playing counter spells? No, no. does not look like he is. So. Well, they were. They, they in the yard. This game just got a lot, a lot more interesting. So tied at life, Mike playing off the top of his deck, and but Joe, he does draw the drown yard. I don't think it's going to be. Joe like it's, does not. It's not effective against uh, Jun deck though because they they don't. It's still dig. Big. It's it still gives him a win condition. True. Joe has to find something that he can pump with the wolf run. Of course. The fact that he's not just immediately slamming something suggests to me that he might not have it. Yeah. Mike is hellbent. Joe is not yet in top well, of the city. Well, um, Joe also has Stenzi Blood Halls, so even if he doesn't get action, as long as Mike oh, can I get forgot life. Mike, I forgot Mike was at 10 life. Good grief. Mm -hmm. Alright, so Joe's in a pretty good spot here. We got Nighthawk. Nighthawk. <laughs> and, and I think he's got enough mana to... Uh, one, two, three... He's got enough mana to activate Blood Hall. I don't think he does. Two. It's five to activate the Blood Hall. Oh, five <laughs> to Mike living the dream oh. of back-to-back -back Termini. I always love Terminus thing one creature away. You would. It's <laughs> <laughs> that. Just four for... Oh, yeah, Drown Yard. Yeah. So five turn... The, the, uh, the Blood Hall by itself is a five-turn clock. And it's safe to assume that... Uh, Safe to assume that uh, the yeah. Drown Yard is not a comparable five-turn clock. Mm -hmm. Battle of the Activated Lands. If I'm Joe, I don't think I... If I'm Joe, I don't think I do anything... I, I don't think I do anything which... Oh, which prevents me from activating that Blood Hall every turn. Like, there's no point in advancing his board. I, I don't know if Mike's deck has any way of interacting with that land. Well, uh, speak of the devil. 
I would say now where he's diversified his strength, if that, yeah. I would say if the key wouldn't live to the next turn. What is happening right there, He's though? tapping it. He's yeah, tapping he's... in response. Mm -hmm. Very good. But now Blood Hall's gonna live, and now mm -hmm. I... Yeah, it's... but he can't... Uh, is, is Blood Hall loss of life? I, think I don't it's know too if you, damage to play. I don't think you care about the planeswalker. This At this point, you're just like, let me. Yeah, push. I think you do because it will. Well, there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah. you didn't know he had no, a dragon I, in his hand. I know, but I am curious to look up Stencia Blood Hall to see. It. I think it's actually too damaged to target player, if I do recall. Let's bring it up so that the world can see. It deals too damage. Deals too damage. It is in fact too damage. So you could redirect if you so. Just chose this is this is saucy. I, I, I really like this. This is turning into a pretty good game. This is kind of knock down, drag out. Really. I mean, if he, if he can blood hole for the win, I like it. <laughs> Just because I, I haven't seen that in since Curses. Mm -hmm. Ooh. There's a lot of cards in uh, Mike's deck. To be, to be fair, Mike has drawn a lot. He did draw back to back Terminus, I know, but. Uh, and then Joe will just find blanks, basically. Two. And then up to And then, yep, there it is. And that means game three, so a very spicy comeback from uh, from Joe's Jun deck there. Forces a game three. You know what? I don't, I'm a little bit uh, weirded out that I don't see more plays Ghost Quarter. I mean, it's in standard, and it's a good answer. To uh, it is being played. Uh, usually the control decks have a, a copy or two. Um, but... Uh, yeah, it's not nearly as uh, it's not nearly as prevalent as say Tech Edge was back in back in uh, uh, Zendikar block. The problem with Ghost Quarter is that uh, in instances like that, when there's a nuisance like you know, utility land, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's it's a good you know it's obviously great. But in the instances where you're just trying to keep them off mana, it doesn't really accomplish anything. No, because it puts you one behind and then yeah. one ahead. Well, well the can't. thing is, though, sometimes I guess I could see the situation you where you blow up like a shock land or something, and it really blows up their curve. Sure. But you have to have, like you really have to be able to do a lot of like next leveling, like thinking patterns or whatever. To get. Uh, there are some instances in modern, actually, some of the blue white uh, restoration angel like mid rangey control decks in. Uh, in modern, are playing a couple of them, uh, or um, what's the word I'm looking for? I just completely lost my train of thought. It's not even uh, fifty. It's not even forty minutes into round one, and I'm already losing my mind. So this is bound to be a long well, I, night. I, 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 I came in here with no mind, so you're fine. It's a good I, thing I, you can't lose what you don't have. Quite. I, 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 I've Points playing, taken. Points, I've been, Sam Hanna. I've been playing a lot of modern on Congress Rice lately, and one of the decks I saw was. It was using Leonin Arbiter guy, which is you have to pay two to be able to search your library. And I was behind, I think I might have missed a land drop or something, but they ghost quartered my uh, one of my lands, and then because of his trigger, I couldn't search out my deck to get the land from that. Effect. Yeah. Oh well, that, that's what I was going to say. In modern, there are some decks that don't run basics, <laughs> yeah. you know. And there are some instances in the game where someone will draw all of, naturally draw all of their basics. Um, so ghost quarter in modern is a lot more. Uh, lucrative in the sense that you can effectively wasteland someone. Yeah. Um, because there are matchups where it would be 100% wasteland. Even, even mine's for Also, here's mine. a very interesting thing. Even before the new trigger rules, which made it, like, playing Magic, like, like mandatory that you'd be, like, an asshole. <laughs> uh, but the, the trigger on the Ghost Quarter is technically a May. So if they forget to search, you don't have to feel... Previously, you didn't have to feel like it. I once won... Uh, I once won a Grand Prix trial uh, because my opponent just uh, just never got his replacement land for the entire match, and uh, I, uh, I've seen I'm you. not necessarily proud of that. But as far as the rules of Magic go, you were fine. It's, I would have pointed what? it out to him uh, had uh, otherwise. Yeah, but yeah, it's not if you miss um, a trigger and it's not a May, you have to back up to the. In that one, it doesn't matter okay. because like it's it's like. If you miss the trigger, like, like you just miss it. Mm -hmm. you know? With maze, right? Yeah, the maze are, like, okay, well, they're always optional. Yeah. Like, if you call the judge and say, oh, I, I, I missed my ghost quarter trigger, what should I do? He'll say, like, okay. you should keep playing the game because <laughs> nothing happens. Suck a living boy. Yeah. <laughs> the, new, the new trigger rules are kind of brutal. In the sense well, the that it does. Thing is Jace. Like Jace, like I always hate. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> yeah, you have lapsing triggers and delayed triggers, and you have to announce them. And then there's the question of, you know. 
If you miss a trigger and it's mandatory, then your opponent has a decision, as long as it was beneficial, you know, if he wants to put it on the stack then or let you miss it, then the question is, which triggers are beneficial? The, the question that always pops up is Dark Confidant. Mm, like, yeah, that's, that's you put four of them in your deck, Jun deck, because it's a beneficial trigger to draw more cards, but at, when you're at one life, dead on board, uh, <laughs> oftentimes it's not a beneficial trigger. But as far as the rules are concerned, it's... It's a beneficial trigger, so you can miss it, and then, you know, your opponent can technically, you know. That, that's not a may, right? Like, that's a required, yeah, like, you do it, it, you gotta do that. The reason that they've gone to all this is because the Wizards, like, R&D has decided they don't, they don't want to have maze. Like, they don't like the fact that there are some triggers that are, that there's two classes. Um, no, I think so, Mike, all, uh, I think we're always going to have maze, though. Uh, they haven't... Uh, I don't know. We're talking way too much about triggers. Okay. I, uh, I, they're trying to steer away from them. Is the thing that they don't. They want. They want everything to be mandatory. That way, there's no gray area, and then the rules enforcement people can figure out how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the old adage is always like during Scars Block, like there was nothing more painful than like in a professional level or like a top tier event, like having to remind your opponent that they need to put an extra counter on their Shrine of Burning Rage to kill you <laughs> because technically if you don't point that out like you are on the hook as well for like for because, like not maintaining well, the game like, state isn't that what Jackie Lee or, or some, some other like some she player like got in got. trouble she got in trouble for like basically she tried to she got pretty liberal with the semantics like basically she knows her opponent missed something but then thought that by like the extreme letter of the law she didn't have to point it out yeah and uh, even though that like in that situation, like, it's hard for me to feel bad for her because, like, I don't know, she noticed no. something. It, but it's the same kind of thing. It was like a, like, maintaining. Well, sometimes you're playing a jerk. I remember, I played jerks and played blood artists. I play you all the time, so. <laughs> Got me. That was an easy one. I don't feel proud about it. <laughs> More importantly, back to the game, we did see Mike, he did have to mull to one on the play. That's a death one. Uh, mull to one. That's exactly what I said. Yeah, he mulled to one. To one. Uh, that's, no, that's he mulled to uh, five. I almost said three. <laughs> None of those numbers are correct. So he, he mulled to zero. He his, mulled guy, to, his leg's living off the top. <laughs> yeah. He mulled to five. He's going right to that danger zone. He mulled to five on the play, but he does have turn three uh, far seek, so he is going to be able to uh, to fix his mana and partially dig out of his mull. Joe answering with a turn one death right shaman, or turn two death right, I think. And there is a Rakdos key room. So Joe will still be able to... Uh, Get in it for one. Yeah, he'll eat that far seek for two. Oh, yeah, the key room can activate. Okay. The key room can tap for mana. So he doesn't lose any uh, any damage there. Well, as soon as he goes to snap, cast, or target that Farseek, he's just going to be like, let's get this guy out of here. I don't even know if uh, Mike is playing Snapcasters. I also don't know if it's going to matter, because he, he did miss his uh, fifth land drop. As we all know, the uh, the control decks kind of live off uh, a glut of uh, tusks, of, well, of mana. They control decks lose magic games because they don't have mana. Get in there for four. Seems good. But what, I love, what I love about the Death Rush Shaman though in this kind of matchup is it's just going to like punish Mike for playing spells that he needs to play. Like yeah. Takes care of everything. It will, pun- it will punish Mike <laughs> for playing magic cards. <laughs> it's Mike's fault for utilizing his graveyard. What a jerk. As a zone. He's, he's threw out a cavern. I'm actually curious to what he named with it. Maybe what? we'll see. The same vampire? Vampire? No. No, vampire. So let's see what Mike can muster here. He's sitting on five mana. The fact that he chose to play his team Vince tapped last turn suggests to me that he doesn't have anything he can do with five. The fact that he's not slammed the top of his deck down means that he didn't draw another land. So there is Garrick. Garrick will be able to take out the uh, the death right shaman. It will of course and now if he has an abrupt though, that's I think it's a pretty sweet interaction. Yep. Oh I guess it doesn't, but also can it just attack with the key room, but Yep. I don't know if I even I don't know if I attack... Uh, yeah, I, I think I just attack Mike. Yeah. There's a lot of cards in Joe's deck that can deal with the Planeswalker. Mm-hmm. 
the dread boars and whatnot. Which I think I see one in his hand, but I don't think yeah, there's a dread, a dread boar. There's right a dread boar on top. Uh, yep, I'll, there it I'll is. I'll wait for another one. Because he can't. What does this group do? Make he can make a blocker. I guess that's a death touch. touch blocker, which I think Joe, Joe's just trying to get in there for as much as I he see can. a Nicole Bolas in Michael's hand, but he's a ways off from casting that. Mm -hmm. Thrag Tusk helps. That's uh, the perfect. In a surprise move by Thrag Tusk, being the perfect answer to every situation. <laughs> I hate that. Iro card, so. iro ironically enough, the key rune, if he blocks, will kill it. And. Because it's first strike. Yeah. yeah. But he's going to block. I mean. It's basically just to gain five life fog twice. <laughs> but that's perfectly fine. Mike using an empty sleeve as a token. He needs some Zach. He needs some Adam Vickers tokens. He needs some Adam Vickers, Vickers tokens. Here. Everybody. What, what do you Everybody need? Everybody needs some Adam Vickers tokens. Uh, skip phase. You name good cards. That's what I would. I name. don't. I don't know if I'd name Jace here. Um. I don't know if I name. Yeah, Sven. that's yeah. that's a very good one. You just it, in this situation where the game is, has progressed so so far, like if you cast that on turn three or four, you name <laughs> Thrag Tusk or Jace. When yeah. you're you know at this stage in the game, when your opponent's multi to five and stuck on mana, like card draw. You, only, you slaughter games on whatever he could draw to beat you, and I think. So what's his hand there? It's a linger. Is that a door to nothingness? And the gate? And the kobolds planeswalker? Is that a mutilate? I can't be a mutilate. I can't tell what that is. I think that's a mutilate. That seems like a very odd choice. Why? No, that's. I think that's a mind rot. I might be smoking crack. I don't know. I don't either. Sir. No, uh, no advancing of the board state from Mike. He is uh, kind of up against it here. Kirun is coming over. So Kirun likely going to trade with the other half of uh, the frag test here. The, the, thing, the like best that's... wall in standard. <laughs> How good would Hover Barrier be right here? <laughs> hey, you did not play during a shards block, but are you familiar with the car Wall of Denial? I am. That car is a butthole. <laughs> so, what is, is Wall? Is it a draw a, card? It costs the same as a Detention Sphere. It is an 08 Wall with Flying and Shroud. <laughs> yep. It's like, impo like, it's impossible to So how do you deal with such a thing? Hey! They were cruel. <laughs> I don't know. Drag Tuskington. You just swarm around it. Okay. Like, you just realize that unless you have, like, Barter and Blood or some kind of effect like Wrath of God or something, like, you're just always going to have to pile around it. Activate. If this key room just eats all the Thread Tusk, I find that funny. But. Mike, playing for the draw. Oh, he's just taking this one. Very interesting. This is another Rakdos return. Death That's right. Challenge. He's just as good right here. I mean, he's bleeding. He's going to be able to bleed yeah, at least two times and gain. So. I think Mike has a far seek in his grave, too, that we can't see for some No, day. he already ate the far seek. Oh, okay. Looks like it's just Garrick and Thrag Tusk number one in the bin for Mike. He does have Blood Hall up. But so. that's the power of the Death Rate Shaman. It can target any graveyard. Mm hmm. And he can activate. We'll talk a little bit about uh, Star City Games Open Series in Columbus that we went to this past weekend, where Deathrite Shaman did a lot of work in the Legacy format, so much so that it won the tournament. It's such a good card. It is very good. Like, I'm embarrassed that I didn't realize how good it was. What did? Deathrite? Yeah, there are three copies of Deathrite in the Elves deck that won. Oh. I Mutilate. It Mutilate. wasn't Mutilate. How many? He only... Like, Two, two, one. I mean, that gets rid of stuff, but... And he does have, uh, over in that stack of lands, apparently he does have a Blood Hall. As the Warhammer players outside, getting loud. <laughs> does he have a Wolf Run by any chance? Does, does Joe... Joe have a Wolf Run? I do not see one. I Can see a old... Cavern, I see a Stencia Blood Hall, and a variety of dual lands. I think he's going to try to set up the Ratchet Return. Well, Mike has the gate and the gate mana open. Animating. Trading. Yeah. Okay. Mike is just in survive mode here. Mm -hmm. I don't 
know if Mike has any instant speed removal. That's the thing about the ski route, is that there's... Nighthawk? I'm very yes. curious as to why the Nighthawks are still in the, still in his deck. I'd like to think... They can fly like, over the rack toes and gain some life. Well, there's that, and also, like, the Death Touch Trample trick, which might, like, in situations like where we were oh, saying before, yeah. like, you can just finish Assign, off. Assign one damage, trample over for a billion. That's a very narrow reason to leave it in. I don't know what his deck configuration is. Some of them play him in the side, some of them play him in the main, some of them don't play any. Well, it might just be a body. Like, he might just have yeah, but I mean, other bodies to, like, have in the deck. But, I mean, if he's sliding in slaughter games, like, he's taking out other cards, so I don't... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So only seven men on board. We are not in range of the door. Although, yeah, I think we're... I don't think we're on turns yet, so I think Joe's in a very commanding position. Time right there. But did my did my clock just hit time exactly at the same time? No. Just say yes. Just lie yes, to me. Yes, yes, it did. Yes, I nailed it. Well, it looks like... Pretty much the best clock... clock on Twitch streaming mm -hmm. in the in the world. I, I Can agree. we disagree on that? I agree. Whatever you need. To what did Mike do? Mike, nothing. Nothing. He <laughs> flew over with that guy. Question in the chat: If Mike's deck can deal damage, I would certainly have to. The <laughs> damn. Yeah, he does have frag tasks. Hot master. That's a good guy. Now here's the thing: There's a terminus in Mike's hand. He's yeah, had it for a billion hit turns. Here's what I would not have done: I would not have cast that hot master. Because now he can't activate his blood hole. And, and he's just going to get blown out by a Terminus. And then they have, what, four turns? He has to kill him. And, oh, so man, this is, Joe, if he would have just left but that open, what happens him. is, Terminus, he goes Terminus, he has Key Rune, attacks for three, puts him to, what, five, then mm -hmm. he Blood Hauls, puts him to four, then he can... Go to yes, that, it will, he might still win, but none of that is better than just not playing. Oh, no, I agree. I'm just saying, like, I, th I still think he has the capability. This is, like, a very common, like... Mistake in my Joe. opinion is that. Uh, and he can blood haul here. Yeah, correct. he does. He, he can blood haul. He has a man open. Oh, was there one? I mean, there might have been one off camera. Yeah. Okay, so he's at six. Mm -hmm. he yeah, he's he's, Maybe so he's, he's gonna put him to three. He's gonna blood haul him into three. Yeah. Because on the turn system, I think we're on what two? This is two. Turn two. Oh, Rectus return for death. Yeah. Hey, yep. Sometimes you just gonna finish it. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to finish it. The wise words of Jordan Pet yeah. Sometimes you just gotta do it. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Last week I coined what apparently is my catchphrase, which is it is, it is what, what it is. is. <laughs> I didn't know I said it, but apparently I said it like a thousand times, so Welcome to the Broom Closet. My name is Zachary Evans. These of course Jordan. Jordan <laughs> and Sam Hanna. So Hello. we don't have a ton of time because uh, we got two. Well, we got one. We got one match in there. We burnt the stake that really didn't happen yeah. because that's an awful matchup for the burnt the stake deck. And then we just saw pretty pretty good magic from the Jun versus the five color uh, super friends deck. Very so um, uh, let's try in the little bit of time we have to talk about one spoiler card. Is there anyone? Uh, Someone talked, uh, Michael Taylor in the chat, someone typed, show us the beard, someone else talked about, uh, show us the bread. Question, in the chat, where's the poster? I assume they mean Tendra's, uh, uh the Magic Broom Closet uh, poster, which is based, I've, I've monopolized, as you'll see on the Twitch chat above, uh, <laughs> the, the new banner that I've, uh, made, so we appreciate that. Uh, I actually forgot to print it out at work this week. I'm having JB print one out, so I'll get that, uh, shortly. But I'm gonna print it out in an actual, like, <laughs> on photo paper and stuff. We'll get that up shortly. Uh, let's quit talking about, uh, images that have my bearded face on them, <laughs> and let's talk about, um, I don't want to talk about the, the big ones yet, because I want to have enough we gotta, time. We gotta leave it into them. Um, yeah, well, there are some, some just, stuff. there are some, I mean, I don't know if you've been following Gate Crash spoilers. I mean, we're into, like, the third week of spoiler season. Uh, let's do Guy or Sage. Guy or Sage? kind of like... Let's, oh, yeah, let's, maybe let's talk about Guy or Sage. So, uh, Guy or Sage... Uh, yet, uh, yet another in the uh, long line of elves that make green mana. Uh, so let's talk about him. He is a one green, uh, one two creature. 
elf druid. Uh, who cares about the druid? It's an elf. So he yep. has the evolve mechanic, which means if another creature comes into play that has a higher power or toughness than he does, uh, or she does, I guess. This is a gender-friendly, uh, non-discriminatory elf. Uh, he has a plus one, plus one counter. Then he taps for mana, uh, equal to the number of plus one, plus one counters that are on him. So basically, um, this can get out of hand. I'm not sure... Um, It'll be interesting to see how it actually works. Like, I don't know if there's a critical mass of elves currently to make an elf deck, like an elf tribal deck. Like, like I think the last time elves was like super playable was Back when, pre-rotation yeah. when you had Copperhorn Scout, when you had Land of War elves. But the, gen- um, the elf wave, yeah, 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 elf, yeah, elf, elf wave, elf Elvish, wave was Elvish, a real uh, thing. Archer, yeah, and Green Suns helped a lot too. Um, so elves is not re- uh, you know necessarily played a lot right now, but of course you do have Deathrite Shaman. Um, which is being played a lot. It is, people forget, it's an elf. It is an elf. It is an elf. It's also a um, <laughs> Yep. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Archdruid is still, he's still, yeah, he's still in M13. So you have the Lord. Uh, and then, like, it, it'll be interesting to see how these decks, you know, if there's any kind of deck that likes to play a lot of creatures, it's elves. Um, the interesting thing about Gyre Sage is isn't that two drops slot and the mana guy at two is always awkward. Because yeah. when you play, it's like Werebear. I don't know if you remember Werebear from back in Odyssey Block. It was a, it's basically a Land of War Elves that was, uh, cost one, it was a bear and it cost one, it was a Werebear. Uh, <laughs> it cost one and a green and tap for green mana. If it was had a threshold, it was much bigger. Um, bigger than a bear. Um, it's a very good card. It also has the best flavor text of all time. Uh, exercising the right to bear arms. <laughs> B-E-A-R. Yes, I'll bring that up later. Uh, that is a fun one. But the uh, thing about it is that this is like awkward because like, you really want to go turn one like Land of War Elf or um, Arbor Elf or whatever. We, I know we don't have Land of War Elves in the, in the st- standard, but you really want to go like turn one Arbor Elf, turn two Archdruid, turn three play another Elf, yeah. tap, you know, start going. Those are your explosive draws. The two doesn't really fit in there because if you're playing the two, then like your turn one didn't go as planned. Yeah. And uh, and this guy really needs to come down early so that you can get the advantage of the evolve triggers. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing interesting about him is that like uh, well, it's just a one power, so you're really only going to get that trigger off of like uh, Archdruid. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it'll be interesting to see. Of course, I'm assuming this is just going in an elf tribal shell, which doesn't necessarily have to do that. I mean, uh, green can ramp without the uh, critical mass of elves. So it'd be interesting to see if you know some kind of, you know, uh, blue-green, you know, a turbo land kind of deck that comes back, or just like a big ramp deck, um, you know, what what the high ends people want to ramp into, uh, yeah. but there's a lot of power in this card, you know, token generators can can come, and I, I think, I don't know for exactly what to check, but I think the evolve triggers stack, I think you get the trigger, like, you know, thanks JB, I think uh, as we get round two pairings, I think like if you entreat the angels or something, not that you would play those cards in the same deck, but I think if like three angels come into play, I think you get three evolved triggers Ooh, because yeah. they come in at the same time. Yeah, and, and I think it triggers. Um, Actually, since it's not the plus one counter. Well, it when it enters the battlefield under control, if it's power, I have to check. I don't know if they resolve individually, but uh, so at least is interesting. Yeah, you won round one, so it's going to be you, Max. You're playing Joe Lewis. Uh, maybe we'll do round three because Joe was just on camera. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. So, but but you are playing Stuffy though. Yes. And you are one to know. Yep. What uh, what archetype did you play against? Red Green Rain Destruction. Okay. And then how did you beat right. them? Uh, I ripped a blasphemous act and cracked it for the last 13 of 13 perfect. <laughs> I love it. So. Uh, down a Rancor Hellcat and got that one. So <laughs> regardless, of course, Max talking about the deck that you guys voted on. Uh, we'll get you regardless in round three. Um, we won't have him in round two because he's playing Joe Lewis, who we just featured. So we talked about Guy or Sage. I've got about literally 20 more spoilers. So as we get different people in here tonight, we'll talk about different cards. We're going to take a quick break. I won't mute the microphone because every time I mute the microphone, somebody loses their mind because they think the audio has gone off. But we'll go out there and see if we can find you another future match. So stay tuned. Round two coming up.